Well, good day, everyone. It is Saturday, which means it's the weekend, and I hope everyone is having a good weekend. Although, when it is the weekend, we all know what that means. All right, we should be doing our studying on the weekend, we should be doing our journaling, we should be doing our self reflection. All right, that is what I'm going to do today, and I'm going to be having a look at the past three days with a price action. And I'd also like to introduce a few new concepts, namely order blocks, breaker blocks, and I want to talk a little bit about time and price and how we should always consider the time of day when we are looking for trade setups. Okay, um, I will show you what I mean by giving you some examples. Right, so the first thing I want to just point out to everyone is Wednesday's price action. Now, obviously price came up here. You know, um, if you can go have a look at my last two videos, we talked about the narrative that eventually led to this retracement in price. Right, so this is our dealing range for Wednesday. Here's a high and here's a low. A low being Monday's low. That's your price eventually retraced down to. So we use this framework for our setting up Thursday's narrative. Okay, so what happened on Thursday? Price, always, we must always remember that price moves mainly for two reasons. Is to rebalance and imbalance and to seek liquidity. Now that is the most basic uh, obviously I'm uh, referring to this in the most basic sense but essentially if you think about it in this way um, you can frame all of price all right and when price moves for liquidity it moves from searching internal liquidity to external liquidity so you can see price comes up here searches internal liquidity then searches external liquidity then back into internal liquidity. This is how price moves. And you can frame pretty much all price action on this basic concept. Now, um, I just want to let everyone know I'm basically um, w working um, to create some educational content um, on, on these concepts that ICT has been teaching us. Um, and what I mean by that, I've, I've been um, I'm in the process of making certain uh, documents, and uh, I'll show you. You can have a sneak peek here. This is this is what I'm sort of talking about. Um, I'll be making these sort of learning modules. Okay, so these concepts and ideas, um, I will present them in a more formal, uh, in a more formal uh, format, and with uh, just worded more concisely and better, giving examples. So. Um, be sure to stick around because I'll soon be releasing the first um, of that content, right? And that will be free to anyone who is willing to learn. Awesome. So, okay, so this is where I would like to introduce to everyone the idea of order blocks and breakers. Why do I? Why am I introducing now? It now is because this order block here outlined. This is the low of the order block, which we use. We use the low of the order block um, if it's a bullish order block. Okay. This order block set the stage for our accumulation at this area. This was the bookmark where price returned to. Now, I would like to let's see if I can fit this in. This is going to be interesting. Uh, let's just. I have. Um, here, um, information on order blocks. Uh, you can pause the video, you can read that in your own leisure. As I said, I'm just, I'll give you this information now, just so that you can sort of follow along with what I'm talking about. And um, at the, actually at the end of this video, I'll show you um, how I use an order block 
in real time to make a trade. Right, I just recorded it about an hour ago. Um, I used an order block to to make a trade for, from 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 just before. So stick around till the end, and I'll show you real time how these concepts work. So read that, and um, that'll help you follow along with me. Now I'm just going to move on. So this breaker block essentially mm, sets the scene for our accumulation at this price or Friday as evening's price action. So if we go, because this is a high time frame um, order block, right, and it's been revisited, we have to wait for price to show its hand. Now, you could be thinking, what is keeping price here, right? Well, this is, well, you know, it's, it's algorithmically price is held at this level, right? And shorts are being accumulated by smart money here. So as shorts are being accumulated, we have to wait for price to show its hand. So where does, where's the first sign for us that price is beginning to break down? All right, it's over here. It's at this displacement below this low. So this is the first sign that something is up and that price wants to trend lower. Okay, because this is a displacement low which takes out the sell side liquidity, taking out a significant low uh, in a swing low. So this is the basic criteria for a shift in market structure. It's price breaking down through a swing low with displacement. Okay, this is the first sign that uh, this is this is basically price the algorithm showing its hand. Prices wants to go lower. Okay, um, I'm just, I'm not going to really say too much more about that, um, um, other than that th this breakdown in price and shift in market suffer is happening. At a very specific time. Now it's happening between two and five o'clock. Now there's a phenomenon in the market that says that between this, the, these times, you know, we are more likely to have um, um, certain, uh, more likely to have volatility, and perhaps um, the market is is coming to uh, a conclusion in its current trend or accumulation phase. So. One of these times is during the London kill zone, which is between two and five o'clock. Okay. Now, exactly at about three o'clock, we see price shifting. Um, there's many such examples of this happening. This is one of them. But just remember for now, London kill zone is a good time to look for for a change in market structure, to to start framing your trades and start um, piecing together the narrative. Right. So we break down. Price, uh, smart money is accumulating short positions. So now we have to think to ourselves: Well, if accumulated short positions, where are they going to offload those short positions? We are willing buyers. Well, or unwilling buyers, I should say. Well, there's two main areas of liquidity. This is the afternoon's low on Thursday. And this is Thursday's low. So these were the two main areas where liquid where price was likely to reach right and that's exactly what happened now we reached there we reached there i just want to just um also bring everyone's attention to this area price action right this was uh, coming into uh, new york kill zone help us eight uh, yeah, help us eight to uh, help us ten um, it's just i want everyone to just notice how choppy all of this price action is. Now, we could be asking yourself, or, oh, you know, this looks particularly um, choppy. Uh, why Why might this be? Well, if you follow ICT's work, you'll know that um, this week was, um, yeah, so it's normally best to avoid trading, especially on Thursday and Friday of um, on a non-payroll on an all-payroll week, right? Because you get chopped up like this. Right, this is not something you want to be involved in. This is not um, 
clean price action. All right, so I talked about the accumulation uh, of uh, smart money in this area during London. We see the breakdown, and the shift in market structure, and we see price attacking significant areas of liquidity below after Thursday afternoon's low and Thursday's daily low. Okay, again, where do we find uh, support? Well, Monday's low. Okay, everyone should know the importance of Monday's range. And uh, you can see it here again in action. Cool. So um, this is essentially scenario one playing out here where you have trending morning and you have a reversal in the afternoon. Right, scenario one, morning trend, afternoon reversal. Right, so we put in the morning slow here at half past eight. Where does price retrace to? Uh, with the afternoon into the evening. Monday's high, uh, morning's high. There's always, uh, you know, stuff like morning's high, morning's low, afternoon's high, afternoon's low. Um, previous day high, previous day low. These are important levels as you should have always uh, marked out on your charts. Right, so um, that's it. That's basically what I want to what I wanted to talk about, and I'm going to leave it. it uh, I'm going to leave it there. And then, um, as I was talking about before, in the beginning of the video, I um, want to show you one a, a quick trade I took. Uh, trade I framed on the basis of our dealing range and um, the fact that we were retracing, and the fact that we were bound to um, to rally, right? So this would be our premium market below 50% our discount market. So as price is moving down, I'm looking to take a trade, right? Now, have a look in this price range over here. I want to see if anyone can pick up the order block that is in discount. There is one of them and it's quite obvious, um, but don't worry too much if you can't find it. Um, I will point it out for you now. So let's pause the video and have a look can find it and uh, otherwise I'll carry on. Right, so here's your order block over there. You have displacement which takes out a high. Right, the criteria for order block is met. This was price came down, found support at the bottom of the order block as we teach and makes a bit of a rally into VWAP and uh, below these equal lows. Right. I guess support, uh, turn resistance, all that fancy stuff. So yeah, price of traces comes in there. And um, at the time, I actually recorded um, the you know me entering the trade. So I'm going to put that on on uh, on now, and I'll just commentary over it, and you can uh, we can all just just have a look. It's just a it's just a little bit of proof of of concept in action. That's all it is. Um, you know these things do work, and um, you know, I'll just show it in real time, why not? All right, so this is just a paper trade, obviously. It's the weekend. I don't really want to trade on the weekend. I want to be studying, but I saw this while I was making the video. So I thought um, I'd just try and um, put together an example for people um, on, the, on how we use some of these concepts in actually in real time. Uh, so there's the order block. Price is currently in discount. We have a displacement, we're taking out two relatively equal lows. And um, so what happens is as price comes down there, takes out the relatively equal lows, we in a discount, we reach the bottom of that uh, order block. So it's a reasonable place to expect at least a small retracement in price. Okay, what we're aiming for is we're aiming for the VWAP above us, and we are aiming for uh, the equal lows uh, support turn resistance. Pretty simple. Um, so can let that play out and um, so this should be finishing up pretty soon. So this of it is just a scalp trade. I didn't expect a reversal here. But did, respect, did expect a reaction. Um, so that's what happens. Price 
pretty much makes its way up to the VWAP. Um, and those um, those swing lows. And then we exit the trade. It's pretty it's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Okay, one more thing. Uh, now this is not something that's really taught by ICT, this is my own work. I use a program called Atus. Um, it's going to show me real-time data exactly what's happening. So I also noticed at that level, quickly pulled it up when I was... Uh, I didn't actually need this, but um, this is just for the confluence. So I just noticed the mother, you know, look at the open interest increasing there. So new positions are definitely interested in that area as well. That is also what gives you a little bit more confidence. But it's also dangerous because they're opening, shorts, the longs are opening essentially, and they're going to get trapped and destroyed.